In this video, we're going to answer some questions and work some example problems involving the first law of thermodynamics applied in chemistry. Okay, let's get started. On what law is the first law of thermodynamics based? Explain the sign conventions in the equation delta u is equal to q plus w. Okay, the first law of thermodynamics is based on the law of conservation of energy. This is a simplified form of the law of conservation of energy. This form is used to study chemical reactions. So to apply this, you need to first define a system. Once you have a system, on the left is the change in internal energy content within the system. If the internal energy content of the system increases, delta U is positive. If it decreases, delta U is negative. Q and W represent energy transfers across the system boundary. Q is heat transfer. If heat is transferred into the system, this is positive. If heat is transferred out of the system, this is negative. W is energy transfer in the form of work. So that organized form of energy transfer or the transfer of that organized energy. In general chemistry, we're really only talking about the potential for pressure volume work or PDV work. And so in that case, if work is done to the system, or in other words, work is being transferred to the system, we want this W to be positive. However, if work is done on the system in the form of PDV work, that means DV is going to be negative. So some textbooks might have Q minus W instead of Q plus W. It, it, it's all personal preference, but you just have to remember that if work is being done to the system, then this needs to end up, after everything is evaluated, this W needs to end up positive or adding to Q. Explain what is meant by a state function. Give two examples of quantities that are state functions and two that are not. Okay, well, if we come back to that first law equation, on the left are going to be state functions. On the right are going to be not state functions. So it, it, we've got a system. This is like a 3D volume. The energy content inside of the system at any moment in time, that's a state function. A state function is like a characteristic or a property of something. So let's look at if we had a swimming pool and it's got, or a container, however you want to look at it. And it's filled with, with water. Okay, the height of the water level, that's a state function. So the pressure of the contents inside here, the volume, the temperature, those are state functions. It's like describing someone's personality. They're, this person is outgoing. They're personable. They're shy, loud, quiet. You're describing that person at a moment in time. You're listing out their characteristics. This water, the temperature of it, the height, the volume, those are state functions. Okay, now transfer processes. So if we've got water coming in, water going out, those are not state functions. The reason is because you can't say at this moment in time, what's inside this system has a certain amount of heat transfer or it has a certain amount of work. That doesn't make any sense. You can't say that at a certain moment in time, this tank or this sw swimming pool has a certain amount of water flow. Okay, now let's say we want to change the height of water from H1 to H2. Same idea here. If we want to change the energy content, the temperature, the pressure, we want, it's, it's any state. You know, there's all kinds of different states, the temperature, the pressure, some combination of temperature, pressure, volume, energy content. That's one state. Then some other combination is another state. Here, this is simplified. We're just looking at the heights of water are different states. Well, I can get, I can go from H1 to H2. There's an infinite number of ways I can fill this tank and get from H1 to H2. I have a lot of water coming in here, a lot of water coming out here, and just a little bit of water coming in here, and it'll slowly fill up to H2. Or I could have a little bit of water coming in here, a lot of coming in here, and then just enough to balance this to fill to H2. You could do, there's an infinite number of ways based on the energy transfer 
that I could go from one state to another. And so you can see that the amount of Q, the amount of W depends on the path taken to get from one state to another. But in all scenarios, to go from H1 to H2, delta H is always the same. No matter what path I choose, the delta H is the same. That's because it's a state function. So that's the difference between state functions and, and non-state functions, right? Same here. I can go from, you know, a, one pressure, temperature, volume, energy configuration to another with some combination of Q1, Q2 and, and work, and I can change that up to go to that same, to, to make that same state change. The state variables, the change in the state variables in all scenarios, they could be the same as long as I'm going from this, that, that one state to that same other state. But I could do that in an infinite number of combinations of, of the energy transfers, the internal energy of an ideal gas depends only on its temperature. Yeah, that's something you learn in, in thermodynamics. The internal energy of an ideal gas depends only on its temperature. Do a first law analysis of this process. A sample of an ideal gas is allowed to expand at constant temperature against atmospheric pressure. A, does the gas do work on its surroundings? Okay, so the gas expands against atmospheric pressure. Yes, it does do work on its surroundings. P delta V. Delta V is not zero, it expands, and there is a pressure. So P delta V is the work that the gas does on its surroundings. B, is there heat exchange between the system and the surroundings? If so, in which direction? So, okay, let's take a look at the first law. The, the W is, is, not, is, is not negative. Well, no, no, the W is not zero but the W is negative. So we can say, because the gas does work on the surroundings, there's work done by the system on the surroundings. So work's coming out. Okay, now constant temperature, the internal energy of an ideal gas depends only on its temperature. The temperature is constant, so this is zero. Therefore, Q is equal to W. But, so, but Q is positive, so Q is into the system. There's heat transferred into the system, right? So the balance is heat is transferred into the system, work is done on the surroundings, and delta U is zero because this is constant temperature, but the internal energy of the ideal gas depends only on its temperature. Consider these changes. At constant pressure, in which of the reactions is work done by the system on the surroundings? By the surroundings on the system, in which of them is no work done? Okay, so what we want to do is we want to analyze the number of moles of gas before and the number of moles of gas after. So here we had no moles of gas and then one mole of gas. So that one mole of gas pushed the atmosphere out the way. So here work was done by the system on the surroundings. Here we have three moles of gas and then two moles of gas. Don't let this O3 confuse you, this three to two. It's three moles of gas and then two moles of gas. So the atmosphere pushed and compressed in the system. So work was done by the surroundings on the system. Here we've got no moles of gas and then five moles of gas. So work was done by the system on the surroundings. Here we've got two moles of gas and also two moles of gas in the product. So two moles of gas in the reactants, two moles in the products. So no work is done. And just to point out, because you might be a little confused about, so the idea of just counting the number of moles of gas on one side and comparing that to the number of moles of gas on the other side, what that comes from is, so in the previous chapter the, on, on gases, based on Avogadro's law at the same pressure and temperature, the volume of the gas is proportional to the number of moles. And so for gas reactions, if the reactants and products are at the same temperature, then you can compare it that way, the same pressure and temperature. It doesn't mean that the reaction had to take place at constant temperature. It's just that if the reactants and products are at the same temperature, and then the reaction probably occurred at constant pressure because we, we do a lot of reactions at constant pressure, right? That's a lot of the reactions we study are at constant pressure. Then... Just comparing the reactants and products, you can look at the number of moles of gas. If you're a little confused by this, go watch the video on, it's titled Temperature Changes in Chemical Reactions. It should be near this one in the playlist. But okay, with that in mind, let's take a look here. We're going from liquid mercury to gas mercury. Well, this, the reactants and products can't be at the same temperature. Constant pressure, that's fine. But the question is only asking us, is 
as a result of the reaction, is work done on the surroundings or not? Well, there was no gas before. There's gas after. So, yes, there is work done in the surroundings. Here, we can assume that so the reactants are at the same temperature and the products are at the same temperature. During the reaction, the temperature can change, but it's a good, it's a good assumption for this question just to go ahead and assume that. Here, we've got just a solid, solid and a gas, so the temperature doesn't matter. We, we have gas coming out of nowhere, work done in the surroundings. Here, you can just go ahead and assume same temperature of the reactants and products. H2, F2, and HF are gases at room temperature, just like O2 and O3. A sample of nitrogen gas expands in volume from 1.6 liters to 5.4 liters at constant temperature. Calculate the work done in joules if the gas expands, A, against a vacuum, B, against a constant pressure of 0.8 atmospheres, and C, against a constant pressure of 3.7 atmospheres. Well, if it expands against a vacuum, that means there's no pressure. So you can't do any work. Without a force, you can't do any work. B, against a constant pressure of 0.8 atmospheres. Okay, so P times delta V, that's it. Right, so in general, you're integrating P D V. That's the most general case. You express pressure as a function of the volume and integrate from volume one to volume two. Well, since the, if the pressure is constant, then we just have this, which is, okay, so what is delta V? 5.4 minus 1.6. Three point eight. Okay, so zero point eight atmospheres times three point eight liters. Well actually, okay, wait, this is positive. The delta V is positive, so this is three point oh four liter atmospheres, but this is the work is negative, it's being transferred out of the system. So we're gonna put this as negative. That's why the sign convention is a little confusing with, with this, with the first law. Again, some, some textbooks will leave this as plus, some will leave this as minus. It doesn't matter. Just remember that if work is being done on the system, it's positive, so energy transfer into the system. If it's being done by the system, then it's going to be negative. Okay, but we need to convert this, the, 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 this wants it, it wants it in joules, so... How many joules are in one liter atmosphere? You have 101.3 joules, and you can look in the chemistry textbook or Google this. Just make sure you, you have a good reference if you Google it. For every one liter atmosphere. So this is minus 308 joules. Okay, C if the pressure is 3.7 atmospheres. So it's going to be the same deal. We're going to, we say 3.7 atmospheres times that change in volume. Okay, now, but we've got 101.3 joules for every one liter atmosphere. So minus 1424.3 joules. A gas expands and does PV work on the surroundings equal to 325 joules. At the same time, it absorbs 127 joules of heat from the surroundings. Calculate the change in energy of the gas. The change in energy of the gas. You see how they're referring to this as a state variable? How does this property of the gas change? Well, there's only one form of energy that, that we're talking about in chemistry. So they're, they're saying, how does the internal energy of the gas change? Okay, so delta U is equal to what? It absorbed 127 joules of heat, so that's positive. And then it does this amount of work on the surroundings. So that's transferred out. So the internal energy dropped by 100 minus 
by 198 joules. The work done to compress a gas is 74 joules. As a result, 26 joules of heat is given off to the surroundings. Calculate the change in energy of the gas. Okay. Really simple. You compressed the gas. That's work done on the systems. Okay. And then it gave off 26 joules of heat. So the Q is minus 26. The W is 74. So the internal energy increased by 48 joules. Calculate the work done when 50 grams of tin dissolves in excess acid at one atmosphere, 25 degrees Celsius. Here's the reaction. Assume ideal gas behavior. Okay, so remember that to calculate the pressure volume work involved in a chemical reaction, we, only, we usually only need to consider gases, gases that expand or contract because the change in volume of liquids and solids is so small, right? So pressure volume work, you need a dV. You need a delta V. If there's no delta V, then there's no pressure volume work. So if we take a look here, before there's no gas, and then after we there is one mole of gas. So initially, this was the system, this solid tin with this dissolved H+. plus. That's the system before. After, the system is going to expand. We've got this aqueous solution here, but the water, the, the aqueous solution, the water, we assume didn't, the volume didn't change much at all but the control volume expanded to accommodate for this gas. So we just need to see, this is an ideal gas. What's the volume of this gas? Take that volume and multiply it times the pressure. And that's the work done. But we can't say it's one mole. We have to find out how many moles of gas are created from starting with 50 grams of tin. So using stoichiometry, we've got... So 50 grams of tin, atomic weight of tin is 118.7. So we've got 118.7 grams of tin for every one mole of tin. Okay, so now for every one mole of tin consumed, one mole of H2 gas is produced. This, this is balanced here. Okay. So, 50 divided by 118.7.421 moles of H2 gas. Okay, so now we can use the ideal gas law. We know that N is equal to 0.421 moles. T is equal to, so 273 plus 25, so 298 Kelvin. P is equal to one atmosphere. R is equal to 0 0.082057 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. Okay, so PV is equal to NRT, so V is equal to NRT over P. Okay, so V, we've got 0.421, liters. Okay, so there you go. You went from no volume of gas to 10.3 liters of gas. That happened at constant pressure. It was a constant pressure process. So what, what is P delta V? Just one atmosphere times 10.3. So the work done is, and, and this is negative because the work is transferred out of the system, minus 10.3 liters at, liter atmospheres. And you can easily convert that to joules or kilojoules. Just use the, the conversion factor from, for liter atmospheres to joules.